Still preserved within its enormous medieval walls, Siena is both an architectural treasure and one of the most pleasant cities in Italy today. Among its greatest jewels is its Duomo, one of Italy's most magnificent cathedrals, which contains sculptural masterpieces by Donatello and Michelangelo. Torre del Mangia and the Palazzo Publico, the old town hall, overlook the Piazza del Campo, which is generally the first stop for most visitors to the city. Tourists flock here from all over the world, particularly in July and August, to not only enjoy the many exhibitions, performances and pageants which fill the calendar to bursting point, but to simply experience the authentic Tuscan lifestyle for themselves and to discover the food and wine specialities of this region. For those who set out on the Tuscan wine trail, the starting point is the land of Chianti. Chianti is probably the most famous wine and perhaps the best known region in the world. The Chianti region is located halfway between the cities of Florence and Siena, in the center of Tuscany, and that's where Chianti Classico wine is produced. The region became really important in 1716, when the Grand Duke Cosimo, the third of the Medici, issued a decree for the first time fixing the boundaries of a wine-producing region in Italy, and specifically defined the production area for Chianti. The second important step in the history of this wine was the establishment in 1924 of a consortium of 33 producers with the common goal of promoting and defending Chianti Classico. The initiative was so successful that today Chianti Classico has its own distinguishing symbol and trademark, the Gallo Nero, or Black Rooster. Why the Black Rooster? because it was the symbol of the ancient military league of Chianti in medieval times. Since the end of 2003, our consortium has been required by the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry to carry out a monitoring and quality control program throughout the Chianti Classico DOCG appellation. In all, I think there are 930 producers, most of whom are vine growers. Some have only small areas registered on the vineyard roll and make their product available to community sellers, whilst there are others who are able to make and bottle their own wines. We monitor all these situations and, in addition, carry out regular testing on over 300 bottlers to ensure that production quality is strictly maintained. One of our other important activities has been an extensive ongoing research program in viticulture, something which began in the 1980s. And certainly one of the most significant results has been to identify and select special clones of Sangiovese which now bear our name, Chianti Classico 2000. To date, about 50 growers, including some major wine companies, have adopted these Super Sangiovese varieties, and already 300,000 vines have been planted. The Classico Zone is home to a number of excellent wineries and historic family estates, offering hospitality and the opportunity to sample their wines, often special vintages or bins not generally available on the market. Vignamaggio is one of the most important firms in this region, and documents indicate that wine has been produced here since 1404. We found a document in the Datini archives in Prato, which has on record the fact that a parcel of wine was sold by the owner of Vigna Maggio in 1404. From the best grapes and the best vines of Vigna Maggio, we produce this Chianti Classico Riserva. 
It's the 2000 and has a label to honor Mona Lisa Gherardini, daughter of the original owners. In fact, it's called Castello di Mona Lisa. This wine has a lovely deep ruby red color, as you can see. Its perfume is very delicate and lovely and spicy. You can taste the presence of a little wood, as this wine has been aged in large 225-litre barriques of French oak for about 18 months. On first impression, this wine is quite intense in flavour, but it leaves a pleasing, slightly bitterish aftertaste, typical of all Sangiovese wine. In actual fact, this wine is produced with 90% Sangiovese grapes and a blend of 10% Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon to round it off. Now let's taste some Vinsanto, which is a traditional product of Tuscany, and in particular of Chianti Classico. It's a sweet wine, which is aged for four years in small 100-litre casks called Caratelli. This is a very elegant wine to offer your guests with cantuccini, the little almond biscuits, which sometimes are even dunked in the Vinsanto. It has a lovely amber color and a perfume which reminds one of honey, dried fruit, walnuts, almonds. We are at San Casciano in the heart of the Chianti Classico district, and this is the kitchen of Mamma Rosa, where we will prepare Spezzatino Toscano al Chianti Classico. The ingredients are onions, carrots and celery, garlic, sage, rosemary, salt, pepper, and either lamb or beef. Extra virgin olive oil and, naturally, Chianti Classico. We begin to make the base by chopping an onion into fairly small pieces. Then a carrot. Vado. Then the celery, including some of the leaves. Fare tutti gli it's all mixed together and quite finely chopped. Eccolo. Then with a little olive oil, it's placed into the pan and left on a medium heat for about half an hour to reduce. Some sage and finely chopped garlic are cut quite finely. And then they're added to the mixture. And it's all left on a medium heat for about half an hour to reduce. The meat, which has been cut into bite-sized chunks, is added. And once the meat begins to cook, add a little salt and, most important, freshly ground black pepper. Now add some rosemary leaves, which have been finely chopped. After about half an hour, we pour in half a litre of Chianti Classico and turn the heat down a little and leave it all simmering away for about an hour. And here it is, spezzatino, served simply with broad beans il Chianti Classico. and, of course, Chianti Classico. Grazie. Montalcino is a classic Tuscan town with a charming medieval character and a significant place in history as the last stronghold of Siena's defense against Firenze and the all-conquering Medici family. 
The 13th century tower of the Palazzo Comunale is the landmark for this area, which is the birthplace of Brunello di Montalcino, a wine created in the mid-19th century by enologist Ferruccio Biondi Santi and synonymous with exclusive quality. There are many excellent wineries here, and one of the most outstanding is Altesino. Today at Altesino, we are in the heartland of the Brunello territory, which until more recent times was simply a vast expanse of wheat and other grain crops, with a few sheep here and there. To give you just a brief introduction to Altesino, the main building was constructed in 1414, and the first people to occupy it were members of the Tricerchi family, who moved here from nearby Bonconvento, where they were prominent in local society. Over the years, there have been a number of owners of this estate, and in 1970, we acquired it. We put in the first Sangiovese vines, and the Altesino brand name was born. Brunello is made from a pure Sangiovese grape, but it's a special clone called Sangiovese Grosso di Montalcino. Questo tipo di uva dava un, un prodotto, un vino, che era, che era più scuro degli altri Sangiovese. This grape produces a wine which is deeper in color and has more body than other Sangiovese grown elsewhere. Il Sangiovese veniva chiamato qui a Montalcino Brunello. It seems like a waste, but in reality it's the best way to ensure maximum quality in the remaining fruit. Queste sono alcune delle botti dove these are Slovenian oak casks in which we age our Brunello for about three years. In contrast, our Montesolo Riserva rests in wood for around four years and in the bottle for much longer. One has to learn how to drink Brunello with its wonderfully rounded, lingering taste and extraordinary bouquet of natural fragrances. To really enjoy this wine, you should be patient, take your time smelling and sipping, and in that way, you can begin to uncover the remarkable features of this unique wine. Assaggiarlo con molta, molta calma. In questo modo riuscirete a scoprire tutti i suoi profumi. In September each year, the people of Arezzo stage an event which has become one of Italy's most colorful pageants, called La Giostra del Saraceno, the Joust of the Saracen. The official proceedings begin with the bishop blessing the various contingents representing the four different districts, before they make their way through the city to the Piazza Grande, where the unusual tournament is to be staged. Revived in 1931, this occasion relives the pageantry of the 14th century as a prelude to an unusual and exciting competition between mounted horsemen with lances who represent the town's four districts. Once a training exercise for horsemen at the time of the Crusades, it later became a popular contest through the ages. Today, each of Arezzo's four districts have entered two representatives to contest for the major trophy, the Golden Lance.
Scoring the last four points has put Porta San Andrea in an unbeatable lead. And they are declared winners of this year's Golden Lance, their first win for 15 years. Montepulciano has a very ancient history. In fact, we have unearthed archaeological evidence which dates back to the Etruscans and Romans, quite in spite of the fact that the present aspect of the town is decidedly Renaissance. Actually, it was during the latter period that the town's political and economic well-being prospered. Here there are many buildings, palaces, monuments and churches which are splendid examples of this period. Montepulciano and its surrounding territory are closely linked to its wine. In fact, we have documents that speak of our district's wine in 790 AD. And here in the town we have families whose winemaking heritage goes back many, many, many generations. The Monte Pulciano region is alluvial, and for this reason we find so many shells, like these. Apart from being very beautiful, they're very important for the soil. Their presence serves to confirm that the soil is permeable and ideally suited for the growing of vines. Yes, this territory is ideal for vine cultivation, and in particular Sangiovese, which excels here. Mind you, ours is a Sangiovese clone, which is called Prugnolo Gentile, which has been derived from a native clone of this district. However, our strain of Sangiovese is considered to be the very best. So much so that many firms make their Vino Nobile 100% Sangiovese. We, for example, at Villa San Anna make our Vino Nobile with 90% Sangiovese and 10% other varieties like Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon. We age our Vino Nobile for two years in wood and let it rest for at least six months, or even more if we can, in glass, because Sangiovese is a delicious wine and, with a little age, develops aromas and taste sensations which few wines can equal. A Vino Nobile is highly regulated and very carefully monitored. It's a wine that's received the DOC stamp of approval in 1966. Di origine controllata. E nell'80 In the early 1980s, it was privileged to be the first DOCG wine in commercial use. We have a consortium of Vino Nobile producers here, which is very efficient, and it's made up of more than 200 members, of which some 66 are bottlers. We're also very fortunate to have a very active Vino Nobile wine trail organization. La strada del Vino Nobile vuol far conoscere questo territorio meraviglioso, dove non c'è soltanto. Vino Nobile is just one of the features of this territory, which has a wealth of art, historic locations, churches and monuments from the medieval and Renaissance periods. There are also numbers of outstanding artisans who work in ceramics, wood, leather, wrought iron and even copper, like Cesare Mazzetti, who has become an institution here in Montepulciano. In what was once the workplace of his great-grandfather and using the traditional tools and methods of old, Cesare Mazzetti creates works of art and many highly attractive pieces for practical household use. Behind me on the hill is San Gimignano, one of the most beautiful medieval towns in Italy. San Gimignano is unmistakably identifiable by its 13 remaining towers. Surprisingly, once there were 72, 
built in the 12th and 13th century, when the town's position on the main pilgrim route from northern Europe to Rome brought it great prosperity. 20 years ago, my husband and I bought this estate as we decided to change our lifestyle. Today, he's responsible for our wines and I look after the hospitality and administration. At La Mormoraya, we have 30 hectares under vine, which produces really excellent wine. We produce two types of wine. Here we produce two types of wine, Vernaccia D.O.C. and Vernaccia Riserva. The basic Vernaccia is made in steel tanks where it ferments and matures on the lees to ensure a sound structure and a stable wine color. Tenendo in sospensione le fecce fini per dare una certa struttura e colore e stabilità di colore al vino. In contrast, our Vernaccia Riserva is made in these 10 or 15 hectolitre oak barrels, where, after fermentation, the wine is allowed to rest for about 8 to 10 months before being bottled. La Mormoraia is part of the growing trend of small to medium-sized producers to engage the services of a top enologist to supervise their vintage on a consultancy arrangement. Marco Bernabé is particularly at home at La Mormoraia, where he began his career as the enologist. La Mormoraia has vineyards in several different locations, and the vines are all very old but very healthy vine stock. La Mormoraia was once a monastery, and the vines were no doubt planted by the old monks. It's almost impossible to determine how old the vines are, but the fruit is magnificent. Today's Vernaccia D.O.C. is made from a blend of our fruit from several different locations in this district. However, in contrast, Vernaccia Riserva is produced exclusively from a single vineyard. And the vintage is delayed until as late as possible in the season in order to achieve the maximum perfume and sugar level. Our Vernaccia DOC is great as an aperitif, with simple antipasti, and it goes so well with fish. And these are the ideal glasses. You can smell the perfume of the acacia flower. And also there's just a little touch of bitter almond. In the mouth it's full, crisp and clean, with a suggestion of sweet fresh almonds and honeysuckle. Of course, the optimum is our Vernaccia Riserva. This wine has a minimum alcohol content of 11.5%, a full round body similar to a lighter red wine, and a lovely subtle perfume of white flowers. To be enjoyed at its best, it should be drunk within four or five years. Once the wine of the popes and Italy's first DOC wine in 1966, Vernaccia di San Gimignano is the premier wine of the region of Toscana and one of Italy's finest. For information on any of the wines, locations or recipe in this show, go to www.winetrailsofitaly.com.